Here's William Lane Craig to try to convince us that if our lives are not infinitely consequential, then they are not consequential at all. But here is the dark note, the sad note. As I said at the beginning when I described my teenage despair over the prospect of death, all of this is doomed to destruction in the heat death of the universe. As the universe expands, it grows colder and colder. Eventually, all the stars will burn out and there will be no light. There will be no life. The stars will collapse into dead stars and black holes, which then may dissolve eventually into a thin gas of radiation expanding into the endless darkness uh, and the cold recesses of, of space. And this is not science fiction. This is the way it's really going to be if God does not exist, if atheism is true. That makes it sound like the heat death of the universe won't happen if there's a God. Is that what Craig is suggesting? Usually the way I hear him make this argument is that all that stuff will still happen if there's a God, but that's okay because people will live in heaven forever. So on the atheistic story of, of life, in the end, it's a tragedy. There ultimately is no hope. There is no purpose, uh, which we are realizing everything is doomed to destruction. I find this to be a rather narcissistic view of life. You could do something with your life that has consequences that reverberate for thousands of years, but to Craig, that's not good enough. Being remembered for millennia isn't enough to satisfy Craig's ego. He can't be happy unless his life has infinite consequences that last forever. Also, is that Brian Callen from Mad TV? He's doing theology podcasts now? Well, we are divided. Is that for you, there is a meaning to it all with a capital yeah. M. And this, this is all important for you. And this is how you put your perspective. Whereas, I, if you like, I really am an existentialist. Uh, I, I don't have that comfort, if you like. Mm. I, 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 I think that if you want to say life is meaningless at some sort of level. However, I don't think, it, as I was saying, I don't think that means there's no meaning uh, or anything like that. I just feel that we've got to recast the way we think. A few people have tried to show Craig how silly it is to think that the fact that the consequences of our existence are finite means that they're not worth valuing. I'm not a big fan of Jordan Peterson, but I do like that he had a debate with Craig about this and told him to his face how absurd his perspective was. I remember in 1989, when the Berlin Wall fell down, there was a great celebration in Berlin and the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra played a part in it, and they came out to a section of the wall that had been knocked down, where there was a huge crowd, and played Beethoven's Ninth. And I remember watching that, the great third movement, the triumphant third movement. And it was so wonderful to see everyone there and hear this orchestra playing those unbelievably remarkable notes in triumph that this horror show had finally come to a halt. You can imagine someone critically minded and rational at an event like that standing behind you as you're listening to the great strains of that symphony manifest themselves, tap you on the shoulder and say, well, you know, that symphony is going to end. What makes you think it has any meaning at all? It's like, well, how do you respond to something like that? You say, you should reconsider the way you're looking at the world there, buddy. Look at Craig's face. You can tell he felt that burn. And, and this ties in the issue of pain. You say, what does it all matter if in 10 billion years the earth is going to fall into, or the sun is going to expand and consume the earth? What difference does it make? And I would say, well, is that that kind of answer you're going to give to a child that's in pain? That's your answer? It's like, hey, you've got the flu, you're anxious, you're having a nightmare, you're in terrible pain, <laughs> but in 10 million years, who the hell is going to know the difference? <laughs>
Putting it in terms of pain makes it extra clear. There are lots of great things which are finite, but which also have value despite their finitude. There are also lots of intolerable things that are intolerable despite their finitude. The fact that they will eventually end doesn't make us any less interested in expediting that end. In fact, if there is both a heaven and a hell, it's not just the case that pleasure will last forever. For some people, pain will as well. In that scenario, we won't even have the comfort of knowing that it won't matter in 10 million years, because that pain will last forever. Yeah, right. No kidding, eh? It's like, you don't... <laughs> if the question is... If that response is absurd in that situation, then it's an absurd response. The mere fact that you can come up with a time frame across which your current activity is meaningless only means that you're capable of playing with meanings across time frames. It doesn't mean anything at all about meaning, as far as I can tell. Is it absolutely obligatory that everything that's meaningful has to be significant in some unimaginable distant future? Why is that the hallmark? Why wouldn't you just say, oh, here's an idea. Why don't you stop conceptualizing your life across time, time frames that takes all the positive meaning out of them? How would that be for a suggestion? Maybe the fact that posing the question in that way makes you feel miserable and wretched and futile is an indication that there's something wrong with posing the question in that manner. It's hard for me to put myself in the shoes of someone who sees life as meaningless if that meaning isn't infinite. That's why it strikes me as narcissistic. And what meaning exactly do our lives have if there's a God? You're a professional philosopher, and so I want to kind of delve straight into the, 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 the deep questions, the big questions of life. And so what conclusions have you come to through all of your years of study um, regarding the question, what is the meaning of life? I'm firmly convinced, Paul, that the meaning of life is to be found in relation to God. God is the ultimate reality and the locus and paradigm of moral goodness and love. And I think that the fulfillment of human existence in terms of our meaning, our purpose, and our value is to be found in relationship with this being. What does that mean? The meaning of life is to have a relationship with God? Why is that a desirable end to strive for? Craig says that God is the locus and paradigm of all goodness, but given that, to him, God is the standard against which goodness is measured, that doesn't mean anything more than saying that God is the locus and paradigm of God. What I typically hear from apologists is that the purpose of human life is to glorify God. I've never understood why that constitutes a goal that everyone should want. It sounds pretty cringe to me. It sounds more like a waste of a life rather than a fulfilling one. And I think the Westminster Confession gets it right when it says the purpose of human existence is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. God is the fulfillment of human existence. It is in fellowship eternally with God, the source of infinite goodness and love, that the true fulfillment of human existence and, and freedom is to be found. Now, when I say that apart from theism, life is, a, is meaningless, I mean objectively meaningless. This is the same distinction that we're talking about with regard to moral values. I'm saying that on atheism, there is no objective purpose for human existence. Even if there is a God, I don't see how there is any objective purpose for human existence. There is no objective, non-circular reason why we ought to apply ourselves to the purpose that God dictates. Glorifying God is clearly not an exercise that everyone enjoys, and to say that we ought to enjoy it because it's good is circular when God is your standard of goodness. As Mr. Hitchens recognizes, eventually the universe will uh, grow cold, dilute, dark, and dead as it runs down toward maximum entropy and, and heat death and all human existence and uh, life will be extinguished uh, on an atheistic view of the future of the universe. There is no purpose for which the universe exists. The litter of a dead universe will just expand into the endless darkness forever, a universe in ruins. Now, of course, one can still live one's life as an illusion, thinking, oh, well, the purpose of life is to, say, uh, hit 40 home runs and steal 40 bases every year, you know, in the major leagues. and and you draw the meaning of your existence from that, but that's not really the meaning of your existence. That's just a subjective illusion. In fact, your existence on atheism is objectively meaningless. So that's, that's the distinction that I was making. Again, it's between objective 
and mere subjective illusion. It's subjective, but how is it an illusion? I would get more satisfaction from a life of home runs than from glorifying God for eternity. I know that's a subjective preference, so I'm not under any illusion that it's objective. And how is glorifying God objective? God is also a subject, so any purpose he imposes will be just as subjective. And there's no objective, non-circular reason why we ought to aim our lives toward God's ends. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.